Welcome back to another video, folks. I'm so glad you've joined me today because today we're continuing our series entitled The Law of Attraction Epilogue. We're up to part three today. Now, this is a series where I'm just dropping the occasional video to help explain and correctly define principles of the law of attraction that are often discussed and often talked about, but sometimes and actually very often not really understood. This comes from a lot of students that I mentor and counsel and coach with that come to me in the early days of asking for help in redefining certain parts of their understanding. And it always begins with what we attribute to be the simple topics. So in this series, we're redefining and relearning what the keys to the universe really are, how to really get the law of attraction working. And in part three today, we are learning how to unleash the power of the subconscious to manifest all of our dreams. This is a really good one today, folks. This is a really, really common topic for misinformation and misunderstanding. So let's finally get this subconscious business sorted out and let's figure out how to make it work for us. My name's Ben, welcome to Elevate. Let's kick on into it. Well, thank you so much for tuning in again today, folks. If it's your first time on my channel, I really hope that you love it. If you do, please consider subscribing and also giving the video a thumbs up and a share on your socials. That's going to help put it in front of other people who may be looking for the same sort of material. And do please stay to the end because we're going to set an anchor point that's going to help lock in today's teaching. So on with the Law of Attraction epilogue part three, unleashing the power of the subconscious. You know, so often when we talk about the subconscious, we talk about its ability to really, really muck things up, to really get in our way and mess things up. And certainly that is true. But let's take a step back and really begin a journey towards understanding this beast that we call the subconscious and understanding how we can tame it and actually employ it as a servant rather than a master. You see, the key is in the name, the subconscious. Sub meaning below and conscious referring to our consciousness. So our subconscious mind is where all of the computer program that runs our life on autopilot lives. We inherit it through our DNA. We learn it through seeing how people react and respond. It's the intrinsic part of us that defines our character. And of course, the subconscious has one job. Its job is to seek out experiences that affirm its beliefs. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for example, that you grew up in a home that was destroyed by a marriage breakdown. Maybe mum and dad got divorced. Maybe money has always been an issue in the family. It's just never come easy. Folks, your subconscious mind will seek out affirming journeys in your life for those stories. You know, it's no surprise that the statistics of children being raised in divorce homes, of them ending in marriage and divorce themselves, are way higher. Why is that? That's simply the subconscious. It has learned a path and inherited a pattern and when gone unchecked and untamed, it simply does its job. It seeks out situations, people, things, places and circumstances that affirm the subconscious belief. The good news here is that it's exactly the same in reverse. There is polarization here. So that means 
the subconscious mind seeks out affirming experiences in line with its programming and not all of its programming is bad. And the pockets of programming that perhaps do have limiting beliefs living there are able to be changed because, folks, the good news is that you and I are the author of the story written in our subconscious. We can actually take the reins of this thing. We can learn to become the programmer of the operating system of our life. So rather than just turning our computer, our body on every day, and going through life repeating the same patterns and living the same things over and over again, because that's what our subconscious brings to us, we can actually grab a hold of the reins and we can reprogram our subconscious and then begin to see its service, begin to see it bring to us those experiences that affirm what we want to see, that we want to feel, that we want to have. The only way to do this is to actually put the work in, it's to put the effort in, it's to understand that we're on a journey. Folks, this is a marathon, this is not a sprint, this is not a race to the finish line. So enjoy your time on the marathon of life and understand that we can begin to seek out where the programming of our subconscious is messing things up for us. Do you want to know a secret hack that I've shared with dozens of people to get to that point that always works? It's simply in reflection. If you can learn to become reflective upon your life's journey, upon your interactions, and critically reflective. Now, not critically as in being critical of yourself to beat yourself up, but being critically reflective, looking upon the story of your life, the repeating cycles that seem to happen over and over again with a critical eye, an eye for detail. How come I always seem to get in the same argument with my spouse? How come I always seem to have the same problems at work? Why do I always seem to go through this same cycle with money? When you can ask yourself these questions, you can begin to go on a journey into the subconscious and you will see the actions that you take, the words you speak, the tones you use, the way you choose to conduct yourself, the way perhaps you present yourself. And you will see the imposition that that has. You will see the things and external forces that come in and apply themselves to you, that garner reactions that are unfavorable to the response and the result that you want moving forward. It's amazing when you can begin to start to see this. It's like a veil is lifted from our eyes and we can see clearly for the first time. And folks, when we can see these things, we can set about changing them. And I can tell you from experience, not just in my life, but in dozens of lives around me, that when this veil is lifted, it just, it clicks. Something just drops. It's revelationary knowledge. It comes like this. Oh my God, it makes sense now. I can see why I keep going around this mountain over and over again. And then you can change it. And when you get to that point, you have hacked into the operating software of your subconscious and you can now write the new program. You can write a program that says, I am blessed and I cannot be cursed. I am favored, loved, upheld and supported. My best days are ahead of me. And when you rewrite your subconscious programming with expectation, and with faith, your subconscious only knows how to do one thing. And that is to go out ahead of you and seek out experiences that affirm its belief. So instead of going around and around this mountain of distress and chaos and disorder, you will begin journeying to the mountaintop of peace and love and affirmation and wealth and abundance and health and love and family and prosperity and grace and empathy and mercy and all of these wonderful high vibrational energies that you so long for in your life. Folks, don't get upset with the subconscious mind. So many people have given up on themselves because they thought they can't break through. You can break through. 
It's as simple as becoming reflective to the repeating patterns and stories of your life. Find what they are. Ask yourself the hard questions, and when that revelation comes, you know you're in the programming mode. Sow seeds of faith into your own life. Talk to yourself and lift yourself up and set the new subconscious program. Because what does the subconscious do? Just one thing. All it does is set about bringing the experience of what's in the program. Affirming experiences, affirming situations, affirming people and places and things and events. It will go out ahead of you and find them and bring them to you. That is how you reprogram the subconscious mind. That is why it does what it does, and that is how you make a shift. Folks, this is powerful to change your world. I say it time and time again, the law of attraction does not bring us what we want. The law of attraction brings us who we are. So no matter what you seek to manifest in your world and what reality you desire to live in, you cannot achieve it without reprogramming the subconscious to become aligned with that. So we would then begin to become the person who can hold that manifestation, who can receive that thing into their world, who has learned their lessons well. Now, thanks for staying until the end. Let's drop an anchor point here so that any time in the future when we feel our vibrations start to slip, we can very quickly come back to this learning. So today's been all about mastering the subconscious. Let's drop an anchor point by getting in the comments section below and typing, I'm mastering my subconscious. Can you type those four words below for me? I'm mastering my subconscious. Repetition reinforces learning. By physically engaging with typing something out, you are setting an anchor point in your mind that when low vibration comes, when that subconscious brings you limiting experiences, you can immediately come back to this moment and know, I'm mastering my subconscious. Get involved in the comments below, write it out. I'm on board with you too, folks. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this video and this content has been of value to you and has blessed you. Don't forget to share it, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Daily videos coming out, so I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you, peace.